When we think of pirates, we often imagine swashbuckling adventurers navigating treacherous waters and seeking buried treasure. Yet, amid the romanticized tales of pirate war, there's a question that rarely crosses our minds. How did pirates deal with sunburn? In this exploration, we'll be diving into the world of pirates and their lives spent under the scorching tropical sun. Piracy, as depicted in stories and films, tends to focus on epic battles, hidden maps, and daring escapades. But beneath the glamorous veneer lies the gritty reality of life at sea. Pirates spent long hours under the blazing sun, enduring the harsh conditions of the open ocean. These swashbucklers faced not only the threat of enemy ships, but also the relentless, unforgiving sun that beat down upon them as they sailed into the horizon. As we embark on this journey to explore how pirates endured sunburn, it's essential to remember that these were individuals who weathered the elements daily. Their lives were a constant dance with danger, battling both human adversaries and the forces of nature. To understand how pirates dealt with the sun, we must first peer into the daily life of these mariners aboard their formidable vessels. Pirates led a life that was far from the romanticized versions often depicted in literature and movies. Instead, their existence was marked by arduous work, constant danger, and exposure to the harsh elements of the open sea. Life at sea for pirates was a ceaseless cycle of labor and vigilance. Days were spent performing back-breaking tasks that ranged from maintaining the ship to handling sails and rigging. It was a world of grueling chores and unforgiving routines. Crucially, much of their work had to be done on deck, where they were exposed to the elements for hours on end. Under the scorching sun, pirates would haul lines, swab decks, and keep watch for potential threats. The relentless exposure to the sun's rays was an unavoidable part of their existence. The pirates' daily duties often left them with little respite from the elements as they navigated the vast expanses of the open ocean. Their long hours on deck, combined with the reflective qualities of the sea, meant that pirates were constantly subjected to the sun's potent radiance. This continuous exposure to sunlight raises questions about how these swashbucklers were able to deal with the discomfort and health risks associated with sunburn. The sheer amount of time pirates spent under the sun-scorching embrace was staggering. Whether it was while manning the rigging, navigating the ship, or engaging in naval combat, pirates had no choice but to brave the elements. Their duties often demanded prolonged hours on deck, and their quest for loot took them to regions where the sun's radiance knew no bounds. This extensive sun exposure posed several risks for these maritime adventurers. Prolonged exposure to the sun's ultraviolet radiation can lead to a range of health issues, with sunburn being just one of them. The scorching sun could cause pirates to develop painful red and inflamed skin, making their already challenging lives even more uncomfortable. But sunburn was only the tip of the iceberg. Pirates also faced the peril of heat exhaustion, dehydration, and even heat stroke, all of which could be exacerbated by the relentless sun. The dangers were not limited to physical discomfort. They could potentially jeopardize the crew's ability to navigate and defend their ship effectively. Moreover, the sun's glare off the water's surface presented a unique challenge for pirates. It could impair their vision and make it difficult to spot approaching threats or hidden dangers, such as treacherous reefs or rival vessels on the horizon. The sun, while a constant companion, was also a relentless adversary, and pirates had to contend with its formidable power throughout their maritime exploits. The concept of modern sun protection, as we know it today, was yet to be developed during the golden age of piracy, and sunscreen, with its protective UV filters, wouldn't make its debut until 1932. So, how did pirates cope with the relentless and unforgiving sun during their perilous voyages? One of the most practical and effective means of sun protection for pirates was clothing. Sailors, including pirates, commonly wore clothing that covered their bodies from head to toe. These garments, often made from heavy fabrics like cotton or canvas, served as a barrier against the sun. Pirates donned long-sleeved shirts and pants, shielding their arms and legs from direct exposure to UV radiation. Head coverings, such as hats, scarves, or bandanas, not only protected the face and scalp from sunburn, but also helped to keep sweat and salt out of their eyes during arduous tasks. Interestingly, pirates were often described as having a swarthy complexion. While this term may seem benign, it carries historical connotations. 
In the past, a tan was associated with outdoor labor and the lower class. Those who possessed wealth and privilege often had lighter, untanned skin due to the lack of exposure of the sun's harsh rays. Thus, referring to someone as swarthy could be construed as a cultural slur, implying a lower social status. Pirates, whose lives revolved around the outdoor seafaring world, were subjected to prolonged sun exposure, contributing to their darker skin tones. When circumstances allowed, pirates would make use of their sails as makeshift sunshades. The sails could be adjusted and rigged to provide shade on the ship's deck, offering a brief respite from the relentless sun. Though not a perfect solution, it offered temporary relief and allowed the crew to escape the direct rays of the sun, at least temporarily. In addition to these practical measures, some historical substances have been employed for centuries as rudimentary forms of sun protection. One such substance is zinc oxide, a white, powdered mineral compound. Zinc oxide has a long history of use in creating a physical barrier against the sun. Pirates, known for their resourcefulness and adaptability, might have used materials like zinc oxide. Another intriguing historical practice related to sun protection can be found in Madagascar. During the golden age of piracy, pirates often frequented Madagascar, where a ground wood paste known as Mason Joni was used for various purposes, including sun protection. Mason Joni was applied to the skin and served not only as a form of sunblock, but also as decoration and insect repellent. The paste's origins date back to the 18th century, placing it squarely within the time frame of the golden age of piracy. Pirates who encountered locals familiar with this traditional practice may have adopted it as part of their sun protection arsenal. While the historical record does not offer definitive proof of the sun protection methods employed by pirates, we can piece together a nuanced picture of their strategies. Pirates, ever resourceful, likely relied on a combination of clothing, makeshift shade, and traditional practice to mitigate the sun's harsh effects. Their encounters with the sun were undoubtedly challenging, but their resilience in the face of adversity was a testament to their unwavering spirit on the high seas. Sunburn, a painful condition resulting from overexposure to the sun's ultraviolet radiation, was a constant threat to pirates. The consequences of sunburn ranged from uncomfortable to downright debilitating. Prolonged exposure to the sun's intense rays could lead to skin damage, characterized by redness, swelling, and blistering. The discomfort of sunburn was undeniable. The fiery sensation on the skin, combined with relentless itchiness, made daily tasks all the more challenging for pirates. Simple activities like handling ropes, climbing rigging, or manning the guns became painful endeavors. Moreover, the saltwater environment of the sea, which pirates were intimately acquainted with, could exacerbate the discomfort, as salt water can sting and irritate sunburned skin. To alleviate the discomfort and soothe their sun-damaged skin, pirates likely turned to nature's remedies. Aloe vera, a succulent plant known for its soothing properties, was a probable choice. The gel-like substance found within aloe leaves provided a cooling and hydrating effect when applied to sunburned skin. In addition to aloe vera, pirates may have sought solace in another unconventional remedy, rum and other liquors. Rum was a staple of pirate life, and its consumption was common. While consuming alcohol does not directly treat sunburn, pirates might have turned to rum for its numbing effects. The alcohol's intoxicating properties could have temporarily distracted from the pain and discomfort of sunburn, providing a welcome respite during long, grueling days at sea. Another consequence of sun exposure that pirates likely encountered was the development of varying degrees of tans. Some pirates, due to their constant exposure to the sun, would have eventually developed fairly deep tans. The tanning process is the skin's natural defense mechanism against UV radiation, as it produces melanin to protect against further damage. Over time, this would have resulted in darker skin for some pirates, providing them with some degree of natural sun protection. However, not all pirates may have been able to tan effectively. Some individuals are naturally predisposed to burn more easily than tan, regardless of their exposure to the sun. For these pirates, the struggle against sunburn would have been an ongoing challenge. They may have tried various methods, such as clothing, shade, or sunblock alternatives, like zinc oxide or mason joni, to mitigate the risks of sunburn. Before you chart your course for new horizons, please take a moment to like and comment on this video. 
Your active participation fuels our journey, enabling me to shed light on captivating historical narratives. A special thank you goes out to my Patreon top tier supporters, Patrick Chamberlain and 1660. All Patreon supporters get to watch these episodes early and without ads, and the lowest tier costs just $3 per month. If you're inspired to contribute, you'll find links to Patreon and PayPal below. And for those who crave even more information about the golden age of piracy, don't forget to pre-order my upcoming book, Untamed Waters on Amazon. The link is down below in the description.